A little over a year ago, a couple came into my office carrying a little boy. The father said to me, my wife and I have been fasting for two days. We brought our little boy up for a blessing, and you're the one we've been sent to. I says, what's the matter with him? He said he was born blind, deaf, he's dumb, no coordination of his muscles, can't even crawl, five years old. And I said, well, to myself, I says, this is it. This kind cometh not out save by fasting and by prayer. And I had implicit faith in the fasting and the prayers of those parents. And I blessed that child. A few weeks later, I received a letter. Brother Cowley, we wish you could see our little boy now. He's crawling. When we throw a ball across the floor, he races after it on his hands and knees. He can see. When we clap our hands over his head, he jumps. He can hear. Medical science had laid the burden down. God had taken over. I've told the story about the little baby, nine months old, was born blind. The father came up with him one Sunday and said, Brother Collie, our baby hasn't been blessed yet. We'd like you to bless it. He said, uh, by the way, give him his vision when you give him the name. He was born blind. Well, I shocked me. Then I said to myself, why not? Why not? Christ said to his disciples when he left them, greater things than I have done shall you do. And I had faith in that father's faith. After I gave that child its name, I finally got around to giving it its vision. That boy's about 12 years old now. The last time I was back there, I was afraid to inquire about it. I was sure he'd gone blind again. It's the way my faith works sometimes. So I asked the branch president about him. He says, hey, Hoa, Brother Cowley, that's the worst thing you ever did, was to bless that child to receive its vision. He's the meanest kid in this neighborhood. 